sex and social mores. Thanks in large part to the internet, pornography is now more pervasive in American culture than ever before. But the vulgar version of sex that porn sells is being challenged by one new magazine headed by a husband and wife team. They say keeping it real is what's really sexy. My co-anchor Bill Weir has the story for our series, Modern Sex in America. Ready? Here we go. This is a $60 hotel room just off the New Jersey Turnpike. There is no crew here, no stylist, just a husband and wife with an old camera snapping photos of a naked teenager. But they say this is not some sleazy corner of the porn industry, but rather a rallying cry against it. That's beautiful right there. The way they see it, their upstart magazine called Jacques is a slingshot of taste aimed at the spray tan Goliath that is the adult industrial complex. They believe America is hungry for more sensuality than silicone these days, so they celebrate the homegrown girl with a curve in her hip and a glint in her eye. Why did you take this job? It was something very different, and um, I would never do porn, and I don't consider Jacques mag Magazine as to be porn, but I looked at the magazine, and as Jonathan was saying, it was beautiful, kind of like, you know, at the Metropolitan Museum with the statues, like it's very, portrays women in a beautiful way, and I like that. How old are you? I'm 19. Uh, your parents? No, you did this my kind mom, of shoot? Yeah, I mean, I live at home with my mom and my grandmother, actually, and they thought it was hysterical. My family can't wait to see it. Jacques may never be as big as Hustler or Penthouse. They may never make as much money as a big porn studio like Vivid. But their relatively demure promotional videos draw around a million clicks each, and demand for the magazine is quickly rising proof that there is a market for skin with standards. Everything has just gone a little too far, and it's just a little too yeah. vulgar. Mm -hmm. And as a woman, I'm a little upset. It's like, we don't need to be doing, you know, a lot of the things they are doing online or to be sexy to a man. How do you decide where to draw the line editorially? What's too sexy in your ass? There, there is a line. There is. We don't really want to see uh, too much. Anatomy, um, I think that can really make it vulgar. A lot of, you know, so we don't do spread legs. We just, we won't. Yeah, this is nice. I Retired fashion fun. model Danielle Leader is the editor-in-chief of Jacques. Can you go this, a little more, there. Jonathan, her photographer husband, uses only old-fashioned, untouched film to fill in the spaces between articles they admit are a work in progress. All of their fledgling success comes from semi-nude models, captured in a way that evokes dad's Playboys of yore. We've picked up a copy of Playboy that's on the newsstands today. It's disgusting. I hate to say it, I think, you know, Hugh Hefner is like an amazing person and what he accomplished with his life, you know, is really fantastic. And I mean, that's something to aspire to, but at the same time, it's embarrassing. And it's embarrassing as an American. In what way? The quality, the retouching, the type of girls that are featured. I mean, whose aesthetic and it's is a problem that? Too, you see those blonde girls that they have on TV, the ones with the dyed platinum blonde hair and the super fake tans? They're like tan from head to Is that somebody's idea of beauty? Ironically, the 84 year old tastemaker they both revere and revile is in the process of retaking control of his magazine. And when Hugh Hefner spoke to Nightline recently, he sounded a lot like the Jacques team pining for a simpler time. Playboy is the magazine that tried to give sex a good name. Mm -hmm. I have said from the very beginning, and it, it, the truth of the matter is that the centerfold, the Playmate pictorial, uh, was from the very beginning the girl next door. But in the 90s, the girl next door made way for girls like this. Just as digital pornography exploded. That was in the 90s, I think, where you saw the, the, the big blonde girl, and we had a lot of them under contract. And those girls still sell today. So I, the point is that there is so much adult product to choose from. There's so many scenes that have been produced. You can find every type of girl. With the Pam Anderson, Tommy Lee tape and porn parodies like Batman Triple X, 
Stephen Hirsch built Vivid Entertainment into a hundred million dollar a year business. But lately he says he's faced a perfect storm of declining DVD sales, rampant piracy, and internet sites that give content away for free. I don't know where the industry will be in five or ten years. Maybe the only way to fight free is to be free and to come up with a business model that supports that. And there is a more sobering threat. After a male porn actor tested positive for HIV, studios halted production this month. And the industry's biggest name, Jenna Jameson, called for a porn star union to help protect against a, quote, ticking time bomb. Her former employer disagrees. But I really do believe that this industry has done a great job in policing itself. And there have been two people who have tested positive in the last four years. During that time, there's been probably 200,000 adult scenes shot. Thankfully, that is something these models don't have to worry about if they book a job with Jacques. But that is a big yeah, if. <laughs> this Manhattan casting call illustrates how particular Jonathan and Danielle can be. Three, two, one. No implants allowed, no waxing at all down south, and most importantly, no skinny Russians. For me, hmm, I really see a lot of Americans missing from sort of like advertising. So as an American consumer, that really upsets me because it's, it's like, so what, American women aren't beautiful? You know, it's like, you have to be Russian, or you have to be Brazilian. It's like, why can't there be an American girl up there who's got freckles or, you know, she's got a pale face? Sorry, I get upset. <laughs> <laughs> and why do you think the American women are hung up the way they are? The media? No, I can't pinpoint that on the media. Could be the media. You can show the full breast, but not the nipple. You know, it's like yeah. on the cover of every magazine, it's like, how much cleavage can we get without seeing the nipple? It's nipple phobic. Nipple phobia? Yes. Yeah, is that a term? I think it, it applies. Could be, right? Yeah. yeah. This country is really terrified of the female nipple. <laughs> a nipple phobic nation, perhaps, but one that still spends more on porn videos than conventional movies each year. Whether an insurgent like Jacques can survive depends largely on whether Americans want a kinder, gentler erotica. Based on what you've learned so far, how big will your empire get? How big of a demand is there for this sort of a product? Well, we like to think unlimited, really. Yeah. Yeah, sky's the limit. I'm Bill Weir for Nightline in New York.